It feels like it's been a long time since we discussed the uniqueness of our celebrities. In my last video about Sabrina Carpenter, I explained how the pop singer was being propped up to become a big star. Some months later, she's magically topping charts everywhere, and every media outlet is gushing over her. They even awarded her single, Espresso, the title of Song of the Summer, in April. In other words, Sabrina Carpenter has been granted the proverbial spotlight by the powers that be. And it's all artificial. And many people have noticed that something was off. They are noticed that no matter what song they listen to on Spotify, the app automatically followed it with Espresso. Could a near-monopolistic app like Spotify tweak its algorithm to push Sabrina Carpenter artificially? Yes, it could be, very easily. The trend was so evident that the mass media had to report on this conspiracy theory. When mass media uses the term conspiracy theory, it usually means people are onto something. But why is Sabrina Carpenter being force-fed to the public right now? The answer can be summed up in one word. Agenda. Her videos and the general narrative surrounding her work comply with the occult elite's terrible agenda. In 2019, when Carpenter was much less of a household name, I published a reaction about her video, In My Bed, which happens to be one of the most blatant music videos about monarch mind control in history. In this scene from In My Bed, Sabrina is in a straitjacket with her eyes spinning, representing her being hypnotized, as MK handlers observe her. She is trapped in a room that is obsessively decorated with pictures of her at various ages, including baby pictures. She has been under their control since birth. In 2023, I talk about her video Feather. Its message was deeply toxic. Also, while filming that video, Sabrina and her crew desecrated an actual church. Priests actually had to re-bless its altar after her foul presence. In Feather, Sabrina dances suggestively on the altar of an actual church, surrounded by the coffins of the men she killed. On the coffins, is written rich. That's basically satanic. After that video, the media began hyping her up, and describing her becoming a massive star as inevitable. Translation of the title is. Sabrina Carpenter is an industry plant. After force-feeding the world the song of the summer, Espresso, Carpenter released Taste. To ensure young people were exposed to its violent toxicity, Jenna Ortega, known to children as Wednesday, was cast in the video. Taste takes place in Sabrina Carpenter's cinematic universe, where most men get brutally murdered, while she exhibits complete indifference. As seen in past videos, Carpenter did not invent anything, murdering men in music videos has been a trend for years. And, by trend, I mean a purposefully recurring agenda bent on attacking and demeaning masculinity at all levels of society. In Taste, a man dies for no reason, and nobody cares. Even worse, they make fun of him. Meanwhile, Sabrina Carpenter and Jenna Ortega survive all kinds of abuse. Taste was mainly inspired by the 1992 movie, Death Becomes Her, in which two aging women drink a potion that promises eternal youth. In Death Becomes Her, the protagonists become immortal, due to a potion created by a bizarre witchcrafty secret society. Although not specified in Carpenter's video, we can assume that she's immortal for the same reason, which is entirely appropriate. Everything about this video is in line with the occult elite's obsessions. Taste begins with a shot of a bed, on which are placed weapons and devices one could associate with BDSM. Also, there's a teddy bear. This shot is oddly reminiscent of the highly controversial Balenciaga ad campaign that alluded to pedophilia. The similarities between this ad and the first shot from Carpenter's video are striking. Are they bizarrely paying homage? In Taste, Sabrina Carpenter wants to kill Jenna Ortega, because she's with her man. The song is said to be about Camila Cabello and Shawn Mendes, who is supposed to be Carpenter's ex, or whatever, I don't care. However, as is usually the case, the video symbolism refers to something much darker. Monarch programming. Indeed, while the video spoofs several horror movies, the scenes are strung together to refer to concepts such as trauma and dissociation subtly. To make sure we understand that this video is about occult elite weirdness, it features the most violent one-eye sign in history. Carpenter throws a knife in Ortega's eye, effectively creating a bloody one-eye sign. At the hospital, Jenna wears a nurse outfit inspired by Kill Bill Vol. 1. It's a great way to keep that one-eye symbolism going. In this scene, Ortega holds a defibrillator and angrily walks towards Carpenter. 
While defibrillators are usually used in the chest area, Jenna places them on each side of Carpenter's head, effectively electroshocking her. Appropriately enough, electroshock is used in Monarch programming to induce trauma, dissociation, and memory loss. To retaliate, Carpenter also engages in MK-related shenanigans. In this scene, Carpenter spies on Ortega while holding a voodoo doll. She removes the head from the doll, a classic way of representing an MK slave dissociating. Witchcraft and especially voodoo magic play an essential role in the programming of MK slaves. In discussing how trauma-based mind control is done, voodoo must be included as a component. Many of the mind-controlled slaves have had voodoo as part of their trauma, and many had voodoo dolls placed into their systems. When vows and oaths are made, an object is given to the satanic cult or the Illuminati, for the keeper of the seals to guard. If the vow is broken, voodoo magic can be used against the offender by using the object given in the ceiling. Ortega happens to own a Sabrina Carpenter voodoo doll. She throws it in a fireplace. As a result of voodoo magic, Carpenter catches fire. And, yes, fire torture is an important part of Monarch programming as well. In another gruesome scene, Ortega cuts off one of Carpenter's arms and chokes her with it. Pop music is unhinged. In this scene, Carpenter is wearing white, while Ortega is wearing black. Duality is an important part of MK programming. While some might think that these scenes might not be about mind control, the following scene clearly alludes to a dissociative state of mind. Ortega and the guy, who is basically a prop in the video, engage in a passionate Hollywood kiss. Ortega then believes that she's actually kissing Carpenter. When the video was released, mass media gushed over this scene. And while everyone was raving about how iconic it was, they completely missed the point of the scene. It is about Ortega being in a dissociative state. Ortega pulls out a chainsaw out of nowhere and slices Carpenter. As Ortega watches Carpenter falling into a swimming pool, the real Carpenter appears behind her. We then realize that Ortega manipulated into murdering the guy. In Sabrina Carpenter's cinematic world, a man's death is always met with ridicule and indifference. Nothing of value is lost. And the funeral is the perfect time to make light of the situation. The guy is so generic that he doesn't even get a name. At his funeral, he's ironically referred to as beloved boyfriend. At the guy funeral, while the nameless guy's mother is crying, Ortega smiles and touches Carpenter in a flirty way. Yeah, they're going to be a couple. In the video's final scene, Carpenter and Ortega leave the funeral while laughing at the guy they murdered, calling him clingy, insecure, and with lots of trauma. The final scene is heavily inspired by Death Becomes Her, but the moral of the story is the exact opposite. By the conclusion of Death Becomes Her, the women look like rotting corpses. In Death Becomes Her's funeral scene, Ernest is eulogized as having achieved true immortality through a fulfilling life where he accomplished good deeds and fathered wonderful children. In other words, by leaving the toxic energy of these witches and becoming a good person, he achieved eternal life. Meanwhile, the women who engaged in witchcraft for superficial purposes must live a sad life where they continually spray paint their skins to cover their decaying flesh. However, in taste, the guy is nothing more than an innocent victim of murder. But he's a man, so it's okay. Meanwhile, Sabrina Carpenter and Jenna Ortega emerge as victorious, glamorous, and murderous couple. In the occult elite's narratives, there is no moral of the story. Evil wins, and that's about it. Like many other industry pawns, Sabrina Carpenter was raised in Disney's system. Then, an inorganic force pushed her towards stardom. But that came at a price. She had to take part in toxic violent videos where death and mind control are celebrated. Because, in mass media, when a celebrity has the attention of impressionable minds, they have to be used to push agendas. It's either that, or the spotlight goes to someone else. In taste, Carpenter plays the role of a psychopath alongside Jenna Ortega, another child star raised by the industry. In this gratuitously gory video, both engage in hilarious situations that subtly refer to the trauma and dissociation of MK slaves. Then, they kill a man, and they live happily ever after. In short, taste is a taste of what the elite wants us to become. Angry, sadistic, emotionless, mind-controlled, man-haters.